Hey guys, this is Simon here with Caddis Fly Shop, an Oregon fly fishing blog, and today I'm going to be tying a Coronamid buzzer for you. Um, this is for all you lake guys that like to do this stuff. Um, super effective fly when it's happening. Um, great to put under an indicator um, and let the waves, the chop, kind of bounce it. Um, super effective way to fish around here at our high lakes, and I know all over the west people do it. Um, you can also kind of strip it um, on an intermediate line. People do that. All sorts of ways to fish a buzzer, but especially when coronamids are coming off, this buzzer imitates the, the I think it would be the pupa phase where the, um, the nymph or the little worm is, is pupating and on its way up to, um, to molt its, its nymphal skin and turn into an adult. So super vulnerable stage, and the trout know it, so they're just munching these up all day. So... When they're eating buzzers, you definitely want to have them. So this is an unweighted one. You can put a bead on it if you want. This one does not have a bead. Um, it can be fished in tandem with something heavy or just unweighted, whatever you want. It's pretty versatile. Um, there's a lot of buzzer patterns. So this is just uh, my take on one that's fully coated in resin, super durable. Um, it's got some flash too. So Taking a closer look at this fly here, um, it's pretty much just a thread base with red flashaboo towards the back, um, a little bit of olive vivis body quill um, up here in this upper half section, and then this is uniflex for the gills up here, and then the wing cases are just um, more flashaboo in copper with a little bit of pearl on top. So it's super simple. Um, it's really easy, doesn't require a lot of materials at all, um, and there's just a lot of steps, but it, but it goes pretty quickly. So, so it's a relatively easy fly to tie. And so these hooks I'm using are ones I actually like a lot. Um, they're made, they're a small break off of Daiichi. Um, they're these Alec Jackson hooks. These are their coronamid hooks. That this is a size nine. Um, they're like little kind of, I don't know if they're small batch hooks or what, but they're like a little smaller like branch off of Daiichi and uh, I think they make really good hooks so I'm a fan of their chronomid hooks I like the shape of them um, they also make some some nymph hooks I think they're called the covert nymph hook and then they make like the the high country trout hook which is a dry fly hook but I've kind of been experimenting with both of those so um, they're good stuff they, they make really good strong hooks um, they're really solid and they, they're just a good looking hook too if you like an aesthetically pleasing um, fly this will definitely do that for you so we're going to first start by laying down some of this extra small soft wire in silver um, first we've got to bring the thread to the back of the fly though i find it easier if i flip it um, again a good benefit of having a rotary vise to be able to do stuff like this real quick um, and so we're going we're gonna to bring this down kind of towards the end of the uh, hook bend back here. Um, right about there. And uh, so this thread I'm using is Semperfly Nano Silk, um, 50 denier uh, Nano Silk uh, in black or it's 12 aught. Um, and this stuff is super good. I've used it in a lot of other videos. It it hardly leaves a, uh, it doesn't build up a lot of body, which on a fly like this you don't really want. And so on flies with a lot of steps that are small um, and you want a strong thread that doesn't take up a lot of space, there's really nothing better than this, this Semper fly stuff. It's really good. So right now we're tying in that extra small um, soft wire. Um, in silver, just silver wire. Um, if you have a material clip, if you stick that back to get it out of the way, that helps a lot. And so then we need to add two more things. Um, one is we're adding this Vivis body quill in olive. It's just a very small synthetic material like this. It might even be hard to see. This is just going to add a little bit of olive color to what we're tying so it's not just red to black it'll just be like a very dark dark olive um, it'll just look a little bit more natural um, you could certainly do this with just black and white I've tied them like that before this is how I tie them now um, I think I find they work a little bit better if there's a little bit more range of natural colors not just red to straight black um, and then what we're using for the back section of this buzzer is this crystal uh, this 
flashaboo in red. Um, and this is the thin, the thin flashaboo. And so we're going to take some of this. If you have a material clip, get that body cool out of the way also. And we're going to take wraps of this and kind of bring it down towards the back here. And so now that that is out of the way, we're going to build, you know, just a slight taper. You don't want to use this stuff to build up a huge body, but if you have to do a little bit, it's okay. You'll just run through it if you try to build too big of a body, um, just because it lays so flat. This thread is definitely not made for building up a body. And so just, once we make just a little bit of a taper here, um, we want to leave some space up front here because we'll build that up with the uh, the gill material. And so we're going to take start by taking this red and wrapping um, all the way up, about halfway up the hook bend. And we're just going to wrap it over itself, um, kind of overlay just a little bit on itself each time. So we're just creating a back section that's all red. And then as you work your way up, try to space it so it looks like a gradual... Um, change to no color or not red anymore. So something like this is what I like it to look like. You can tell it kind of gradually goes from r fully red to kind of black up here. Um, and then we'll trim this off. And then what we're going to do is take this body quill here and we'll wrap this over the red here. If you have a uh, bobbin rust getting this your bobbin out of the way can be pretty helpful. And so here we're going to take this body quill and we're going to wrap a little bit over the red. That's not as important as up here. We're going to wrap this pretty tight in olive. And so now we're getting a dark olive color up here. And if you need to build it a little bit more for the profile, you can go back if you want a little bit darker olive here. And so now we're, we've got an olive colored buzzer here. Um, that is not what you want to happen. If it comes undone, if you give yourself a long enough piece, you can just go back. If you built up a little extra bulk on the front, that's okay. And so here, now we have, you know, a, a very dark olive buzzer here. And so then with this access here, we're going to trim this excess body quill off up here. And then I'm going to kind of mark where the wing pads and stuff are going to go up here in this section that's just all black, you can see. And so when I think of where I need to do the ribbing for this fly, it's going to go all the way up to there. And so I normally do two wraps towards the butt down here. I'll scoot this up so you can kind of see what I'm doing down here. And then we're just going to very gradually try to evenly space these wraps up the body for this segmentation. This is also durability. Wire makes a great tool for making your flies extremely durable. And so it doesn't really matter what happens up here. This is just to kind of clamp it down. And so now that we have this wire secured up here, we're going to put in the, um, the gill material, which is uni stretch. Um, it's just this kind of nylon-y material. I don't really know what it's made of, but it kind of puffs up when it's not pulled tight. And so to do this, I'm going to double it over itself like this and tie in a small section here. Again, I really don't like to worry how long stuff is. I'd rather have it too long and then trim it down. And so um, here I'm just going to tie in a larger helping of it up here. Um, and this stuff will help build up the body up here. And I'll probably pull both of these back forward to kind of help with uh, adding a little bit more mat gill material up here. And so now we have this bump up here so we didn't have to use a ton of our, our thread to do that, which is nice. And so I'm going to trim this down, not exactly to where I want it, but just enough to get it out of the way. Um, so now this last part, we're going to put in our uh, flash and our, our gill pads, our wing pads, sorry. Okay, so next what we need is we need one piece of the very thin flashaboo. 
which is this stuff. It's Flashaboo Mirage or the Micro Flashaboo. The Mirage just also has silver in it. Um, so if you have the Mirage, you got to pick through and find a piece of the pearl. Um, so we put one of these pieces on the top, like so. Sometimes it's hard to kind of catch it. This nano silk, the one issue with it is, is it is, it's not waxed, so it's kind of slippery. Um, okay, and then the next thing we do is the same thing, except this is for the wing pads of the emerging bug. This is copper, they're kind of yellowish color, um, but same thing, the really thin flash of boo, except this time in copper. And we're going to do one on either side, is how we're going to tie these in. So I'll do this side myself, and then I'll show you guys the other side. And you really only need a short section for these. Um, if you're cranking out a bunch of these, you can figure out what, what works best for you to uh, we'll kind of measure out how much you need. But I would definitely always start with more. It kind of sucks when you run out. And so now that this side's in, this top's in, and the other side by me is in, I'm going to kind of just wrap and build this up just a little bit and color it up dark. Just turning it there so I can kind of see what I'm doing. And so now we have this big bump up here, which is, you know, the, the, the adult bug coming out up here. And so now for the rest, we're going to take this pearl in the middle, wrap it up to the top. Then we're going to take this copper here on the side, wrap it on the side. And then we'll take this other copper on my side and wrap it. Make a couple wraps so it doesn't come out if you've got to pull them tight against the body, pull them. So then once we know these are for sure secured, we're going to clip them off. And then we will uh, whip finish and we'll resin this guy up and it'll be done. So just did my little whip finish. And trim the end. This is what the fly looks like. We're going to coat it in UV resin to make it super durable. You can see the wing pads, a little bit of flash on the top. They get kind of pearlescent when they're full of oxygen when they're ascending to the surface and so to coat it I'm going to use solar as bone dry and very lightly because if you put too much it builds too thick of a body and so if you're going to put more on the body you're going to want it up by the head but this will make your fly super super durable just a thin layer cover the whole surface if you cover the whole surface it's not going to come apart at all you just got to make sure you cover the whole surface and there's nowhere where it can chip off. And so now you can tell it's coated. We're going to take our light and cure it. And the last step is we'll just trim those gills down just a little bit. And then you got a great buzzer that works great for fish in the high lakes when the chronomids are happening. We'll trim this down just a little bit. Here we go. You got your little buzzer for your lakes. Um, Try it if you like. Let us know in the comments what you think about it. Um, you can get all this stuff at caddisflyshop.com. There's a, another, might be some more pictures on OregonFlyFishingBlog.com. And if you like this kind of stuff, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and put your notifications on. Thanks, guys.